Welcome to Becoming the Ultimate Coach. I am the Jock, this is the Doc, and we are on part three of Becoming Brilliant at the Basics. Today we're talking about verbal communication. Last one we talked about nonverbal communication, so if you haven't seen that one, go back and check that out. But Dr. J, break it down to me. On a, like a 30,000 foot view, like how should coaches, trainers think about the verbal communication with clients? Yeah, awesome question. The, the big thing that I talk to people about is we all have our own natural tendencies, the way that we communicate. Some of us are amazing storytellers and very detailed. Other people are kind of the highlight reel kind of people. Uh, some people are more chatty, some people are less chatty. So we all have our natural tendencies. The key though is you still want to be you, but when you're communicating with anyone, a client particularly, you want to also start to recognize what their tendencies are, what their verbal language is like, and how to meet them somewhere in the middle. Because if you're just like drinking out of a fire hose kind of a communicator to them and they're tending to be more quiet or they're new or nervous or whatever it is, um, that can be a really hard way to connect and it can be overwhelming. Where other people love that. So really kind of read your client and know that your own communication is going to need to adjust based on who you're working with, how long you're working with them, and what you're doing with them. Yeah, my biggest talking point with, with, with trainers is like, number one, you need to stay neutral. We're gonna stay away from these like polarizing topics when we're talking about different stuff. If like if we're getting into the politics or we're getting into guns or vaccines or whatever it is, like yeah. you, you saw a lot of this in the last couple of years of people being very vocal about that, but at the thing, same time, like. You want to be yourself, but you don't want to scare away business. And you don't have to have the same beliefs as all your clients. And ultimately, we, we, we got into this to impact people. Ultimately, we got into this. Um, we want to make a career out of it, so we need to make the money doing it. So if you're just scaring people away by pushing your thoughts and ideas away, like I see it happen. The other big one, too, is with almost all my clients, I try to figure out something that they're, inter they're interested in and, and something that I'm also interested in as well so we can have a good dialogue and conversation with that. And that can be a wide spectrum of things. It's amazing how many clients, um, you know, typically, at least in the one-on-one -on -one field that I'm at, there's most of the, the clients are older than most of the trainers. Right. And so they have good life experiences. So some of them are experts in something. Some of them have more life skills in something. So it's almost amazing that you can also learn some things from them, but also um, make sure that you know, find things that they're excited about. And it could be their kids, it could be their career, it could be the nonprofit they're working for. If you see them kind of light up a little bit, I think that's a good sign that you can get into a little bit of that with them. Yeah, and, and to kind of pair both those together that you talked about is clients aren't paying you to be a pundit. So yeah. they're, not, they're not paying you so that you can share your opinion on everything. And so even when people are like, well, I need to be myself and I have opinions, absolutely, but your client's not there for those opinions. If you're at a social gathering or other types of things, yeah, this is your time as well as someone else's. But when you're working with them, why are they there and what are you providing? And then hopefully with that, you're also creating what we call a shared experience. You don't have to agree on everything. You don't have to, but to your point, it's a shared experience in the sense that they're teaching you something or you're learning. And even if it's not something that you're going to use, asking questions, things like that, and really just kind of diving into that both ways communication. They want to know you as a person. So you don't want to be a robot. You don't want to be non-communicative because they do need to connect with you. They're in a vulnerable place in many ways with some of the things that we support them in when we were training. So having that shared experience and connection, but yet also, as you pointed out, doing it in relation to some of the things that they're interested in and what they can connect you with. I also think this is why it's important for that continued education because it's something to talk about. For example, I just got back from a conference and at that conference might be the uh, leading expert on wearable technologies. He was a PhD, he was um, contracted by the military to figure out the best wearables. So I don't know anybody else possibly in the world that has more insight on that. And so he was pulling up his slides of like the Aura Ring and what does well, what it doesn't do well. So all my clients that had the Aura Ring, I can be that information insight to them. So I can translate this. So it gives us something to communicate about. It also gives them value. And it also, it's engaging to me because it's something new that I've learned. And that's a great example too of, I love that example. In pairing that with also that if somebody's like, oh, I have an Apple Watch. I really like my Apple Watch and I like that app. And, and so it's better than the Aura Ring and, and, and it does all these amazing things. 
is that's not the time for us to go, no, 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 I was at a conference yeah. and this dude was like, aura rings the, you know, the bomb. It's just more like, wonderful, I'm glad that works for you. Yeah. He was just sharing some things about the aura ring. Um, I'm not in a place to do a side-by-side uh, -side comparison. And I point that out because it sounds logical, but I see people do that. It's like, oh no, 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 this guy was like, the aura ring is that, like he's saying that this doesn't, and it's almost this, what people feel connected to, if it's not impacting why you're there to help them, they know themselves, they know what they like, and that's not the point. But to your point, it's about sharing, it's about just being a source of information, and then it's up to people what they want to do with that. Part of this verbal communication is just me showing that I am there and I am paying attention too. So uh, I've talked about this in previous episodes, like whether it's one-on-one uh, -on -one or small group, I still want to give one-on-one -on -one attention. So if it's a small group, I'm going around to each person and I'm, I'm having a conversation with them. I'm like, hey, Janine, make sure that your shoulder's down on this movement. Or, hey, John, good job with that. It's just I want to have those individual conversations. Now, if it's one-on-one, -on -one, they know that you're talking to them. But also just if I'm just watching it and there's nothing said during the whole thing and like, did they did I do a good job? Did, did I need to check something? And you can start to figure out. Some clients, they like, they want to have every little correction done. So you know that. Some people, they, they want a cheerleader, so they want to hear that. And some people are okay with just, you're not saying anything unless it gets real bad. So just starting to read your clients, to, to give them the verbal communication that they're looking for too is super important. Absolutely. And I think too that, um, and sometimes, you know, people will say, well, I'm just not sure how to initiate with that person. I don't know, like, where do I start? Or they don't, they don't say much or they're, um, and that's fair. But you can also notice things, right? Like if you have that client that comes in with new shoes all the time, you know, they probably have kind of like a, a kicks thing, you know, where they like their different shoes or whatever. So you can comment on that and start a conversation and see if they're like, oh yeah, I've got a shoe thing, whatever. The trick with that though, and this is where I kind of see people go awry, is as you pointed out earlier, a lot of clients will be older than the trainer in many areas. And sometimes with that comes um, a difference in income level. And so it's great to say like, oh, I noticed you have a lot of cool new shoes or you're switching your shoes up a lot. Do you like shoes or things like that? Those are really nice. Just don't make the mistake of then saying, geez, I wish I could afford those or whoa, those are way too, and not creating a value judgment or any of that kind of, but just truly admiring it and enjoying that shared experience of the cool shoes. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting you brought up that value thing because that's another conversation that, that you'll see a lot with uh, young trainers. They're like, you know, I, I could save a few bucks if I if I drive to Walmart and I buy this 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 um, supplement there versus like buying it there. It's like a lot of the, the clients there they're they're wanting top dollar, they're wanting that value. So having that communication to understand where they're coming from. So they're not always looking for the, the cheapest way to do things. They're looking for the most value. What what adds to them? I have a friend that's big on. It, it should be like a tennis match. Like if you're talking with someone, it's like you hit the ball over, they hit it back, you hit it over. Now, don't get me wrong, some clients are just gonna keep hitting over, which is perfectly fine. But what we don't want is the opposite. If you're the guy that's just the tennis ball machine, it's just constantly going exactly. and going and going. And I've seen some of that. Yes, exactly. Yeah, and, and we call it initiation, responding, and continuation in conversations, right? And some people are natural, better initiators. Most of us can respond. And then some people are really good at continuations. And just kind of knowing where your role is in that versus that client. And you may be working with one client and they're a high initiator and then you're just volleying back and forth like you said. In another client, they might be quieter, but if you initiate, hey, love your sneaks today, love that, you know, whatever, then they're good at responding and then the conversation. So almost thinking about that tennis match and whose turn is it to serve? Is it yours or is it theirs? And that may differ between clients. And, and also kind of breaking it down to like reading their nonverbal and verbal communication on what you're bringing up. Because if you're bringing up, you know, hey, you know, there's a football game going on this weekend and, and they don't really like, oh, that's interesting. Like a lot of people are, are polite. They're going to respond back. But if they're not like, oh, who's playing? Or, oh, yeah, I'm excited to see the game. Or did you hear about the Chargers? Or they're bringing some other thing up. Like this it might be bringing up something that you're not interested. Like I'm not interested in professional football. If someone brings it up to me, I'm like, oh, that's cool. But that's it. I don't want to talk about it more. And if, if I'm paying you for a service and we're doing that and you want to just keep talking about something I'm not interested, I'm eventually just going to leave. And you also remember it because I was recently in a cell phone store and the guy that was helping me was really nice, knowledgeable, but he wanted to talk about the Chiefs game the other day. Just wanted to talk about it. And I was kind of like you, like, oh, that's, yeah, and kind of saw part of it. So he started walking around the store finding anyone that would communicate with him about the cheese game. And at the same time, he's trying to get my stuff done, you know, and if you've ever been in one of those stores, they're in their software for like 20 minutes. Yeah. And, and 
that's what I remember from that experience. It's like, nice guy, but I was not interesting enough to hang out with him. That's fair. But I was like, could you just, but he had to go talk to somebody about it. And I was like, okay, we need to rethink this as far as a customer service or client interaction. Yeah, so it's just super important as we break down this um, this verbal communication of, of, of with your clients, like find something they're interested in. It's not about you talking about just what you're interested in. Make sure that you're staying neutral with these topics. Again, we're, we're going to these breaking down the basics because it's so important for your long-term just career and success because if you, if you get the basics down, you have the potential of being a great trainer. So until next time.